shaking. I can't. You, I cannot. You just got to get, you've got to stop shaking. I can't. No, I know you're frozen. <laughs> I'm sorry. Caitlin Francis in for Nicole Malepa today. Good morning. Uh, how are you? I'm frozen. Popsicle. Just let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. I can't, though. Yeah. Becky said I could use the um, blanket on the back of the couch, but I don't know if that's a good idea. Oh. Well, you know, because then you get warm and toasty and then you have to take it off. Oh, that's not good. I know. Scott Haney, how are you? I'm good. I'm good this morning. It's been a great day so far. I hope it's been a great day for you. The weather not cooperating so much today. A little dreary. We're going to have an update on that forecast coming up in just a bit. All right. Well, let's get you to check on those top stories here this morning. The celebration is not over yet for our national champion, Yukon Huskies. Yay! Yeah, after last night's welcome home rally, Governor Lamont is set to have Hartford host a victory parade this coming weekend. It will be Saturday morning. The route will start at the state capitol, go north on Trinity through the Soldiers and Sailors Memorial Arch, and then end at the intersection of Asylum and Trumbull. So after the parade, there will then be a victory rally at the Excel Center. We've got all the details about the parade and the route up on the Channel 3 app and WFSB.com. Channel 3 will also have live coverage there Saturday morning. Just in case you can't attend, you can watch it all on the Channel 3 app and streaming. Uh, so it's a lot of fun. It's a very lot of exciting. Fun. It's going to be very exciting. I, I hosted a Yukon parade for the women back, I can't even remember, it was 1999 or 2000, and it made my career. It did it. It did. Yeah, this is a lot of fun. It's, it's a, a lot of fun. It's, it's fun for the People whole state. People tuned in and they were like, who is this guy? Yukon country. Here we are. Well, speaking of Yukon's campus, slowly, get, slowly getting back to normal yeah. after damage from the celebration Monday night. Fifteen people are facing charges, many of them Yukon students, for the destruction. Renovations to fix lampposts and smashed windows is well underway, as you can see on campus. So far, the university has not released the estimate of how much it will cost to fix everything. Many of the charges are for disorderly conduct. Yukon says it will punish students for the damage even considering expulsion 16 people were also hospitalized with minor injuries in the aftermath of the win that's a little unfortunate well you know they had extra police presence over the weekend like Friday into Saturday because that's when the final four was and so they were trying to curb some of this activity it happens every time they win. Yeah, which is unfortunate. A title. Just uh, it have is a good time. You don't uh, have to break lamps. You don't have to. I saw one kid walking around with a tree in his hand. I'm like, what are you doing? The tree didn't do anything to you. Well, you know, that's the thing. It's like, I know a lot of these students have. Um, they're very fortunate. They come from families who help them pay for their tuition. But a lot of these kids take out loans to pay for their Absolutely. college experience. And then you're paying to go live on a campus and then you destroy it. I, I just don't understand the mentality. I, I, I don't get it. I don't get the celebration turns into destruction mentality. Right. That, that's what I, I just Just don't have get. a good time. Well, let's talk about something positive. All right. Well, Connecticut could soon be home to another national champion. We're excited about this. The Quinnipiac hockey team is headed to the Frozen Four. This will be the team's first appearance in this round of the tournament in seven years. So the Frozen Four taking place in Tampa, Florida. Quinnipiac will face Michigan State tomorrow night. Puck drops at 8.30. And our very own Dylan Fearon will be there on the sidelines. He's a QU grad himself. We're going to have live coverage from him all day. Awesome. A little bit nicer in Tampa. Yeah, probably. Today, well, tomorrow's going to be like in the 70s here in Connecticut. It was in the 70s yesterday. It was absolutely stunning. I played some golf yesterday. It was fantastic. Our Channel 3 Early Warning Radar scans the state dry. Early Warning Futurecast tomorrow's weather today. Watch what happens. I mean, it stays cloudy during the day today with maybe a little drizzle, maybe some fog, maybe some passing showers. Nothing too well organized, though. It's just kind of a dank and dreary day. Now, tomorrow, you're going to wake up to some cloud coverage, but watch the partial clearing today. Take place that destabilizes the atmosphere a cold front barrels into the state and there we go right around 5 6 p.m. showers and thunderstorms are rolling oh, no. through the state this is 6 p.m. tomorrow evening so prepare for that uh, and that moves out really quick by 7 p.m. it's exiting the state the Hartford Yard Goats game opener should get off without a hitch which is good news in the meantime the rest of today clouds 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 and dropping cooler temperatures even a chance for a pass shower along the shoreline by 7 p.m. I'll have your full three-day forecast coming up a little bit later on in the show. All right, very good. Yeah, tomorrow, uh, Yard Goat's first pitch is 7:10, so it looks like those storms will be out of here. Yeah, knock wood. Let's just 
Right. Let's just hope that is the case. I know, okay? we got to get through today and then tomorrow, and then it's going to be nice. Yeah, the weekend's looking really nice. A little cool on Saturday, but Sunday's looking amazing for Easter Sunday. The Easter Bunny's going to jump around. And well, we've got a warning about Easter. I was going to say, speaking of the Easter Bunny, he might not want to put these in baskets. Yeah, what's going on? Yeah, Consumer Reports warning parents and the Easter Bunny about a popular Easter basket item. So if you're helping the bunny put together a basket, listen up. Consumer Reports is calling on the maker of Peeps to stop using a known carcinogen, red dye number three, in their products. The FDA says the dye has been flagged for causing cancer. The organization is also calling on the federal government to ban the dye altogether. All right, do you, I, I, I do not eat the peeps. I don't love them. I'm not a big fan. I know they're a staple. They look cute in the baskets. They're I just, cute. I don't eat you know, them. Do you know what, though? I've seen people, especially on social media, use them. Um, have you ever seen the double vase technique where you put a vase inside a vase so that you can have your flowers and then you can decorate the outer vase. Oh no, I, 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 no, I've never seen it, but I've heard. I, Jamie, I can just, yeah. So it, this is a really great idea if you're looking to hide so the stems. The and so I've seen people take um, peeps. peeps and then put them on the outside, and then you don't you don't eat them, but they're decorative and they're really cute because you've got the bright uh, pastel colors. Yeah, I think colors. of them as more a decorative thing than something to eat. I don't know. I guess people eat them though. There's a I lot think of sugar. people do eat them, but yeah, they're what's it, what's that? Energy. Oh. Thank you. We're moving on. We're moving on. Happening today in Cheshire, state <laughs> leaders will host an Energy 101 workshop. Yeah, attendees can get free home energy audits. This is good news. And learn how you can save on your electric bill. Absolutely. Yeah, lawmakers will also speak on federal and state tax credits for solar energy, which could also help you save on energy costs. The workshop will be held at Cheshire Town Hall tonight from 630 to 8 o'clock. All right, now, I, I have not switched my energy supplier after the Eversource price hike. I don't use that much energy in my house. I'm hardly ever home. Same. So, yeah. So the I, am, I also unplug everything. You do? Everything. Including your refrigerator. Except that. Except the refrigerator. Is All your right. refrigerator running? Yeah, why? You better go get it. Uh, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> Wah, 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 wah. All right, you know what time it is? That was a Scott Haney joke. That was a total Scott Haney joke. <laughs> okay, it's Wine Wednesday. Thank you. We're sending Marcy Jones to different wineries and tasting rooms all across the state every week to test them out. How did she get this job? I don't know. So where is she today? Let's find out more. I think you're How very close I? to the station. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, guys, we finally found a wine bottle that is big enough to quench my thirst just for the first glass. We are here at Carbone's Prime in Rocky Hill. Like you said, right next to the stage. We practically could have walked here, but we didn't. We're here with my friend Julius Angelini. We're going to get to him in just a few minutes. Take a look at these fabulous wines. We have, we've got a sparkling. We've got a lovely white that not too many people may be familiar with, but it might be the perfect time to switch it up. You know, it's spring. It's a time of transition. We've also got two reds, and we're going to be discussing two dishes here. One that you may know because it's one of the ones that's always on the menu, and then one that might be something that's new. So we're going to wave to the chefs over here. We've got them. We're going to be talking to them soon coming up, and we're going to have much more right after this. Happy Wine Wednesday, guys. Happy Wine, Happy Wednesday. Wine Wednesday. We'll see you in five minutes. We're heading on over.